is an iPhone 12 mini. And I had a scenario that I felt like I should explain to you much as I have already fixed it. And to be able to explain it to you, I'll begin with a little bit of history with this phone. Now, here goes the story. So the gentleman tells me he was at the swimming pool and I think something happened and in trying to get out of the pool, he ended up dunking the iPhone into the swimming pool. However, this is a replacement uh, refurbished iPhone, so definitely waterproofing is usually lost. So then he says about an hour after it dunking into the swimming pool, he lost the ability to use his face ID. Later on, the phone, about two hours later, could not go on and it would only show the Apple logo after plugging in the charging icon. However, he says that he had replaced the battery also just recently, which meant it put me in a situation where I did not suspect the battery. So, first things first, because usually when a phone is dunked into water, what you have to do is to make sure it is thoroughly dry. But since they had kept the phone uh, with them for four or five days without seeking attention while the battery was in, the first course of thing was to remove the motherboard from this phone and then uh, soak it into the ultrasonic cleaning fluid and then uh, rinse it and dry it and then test it. So what happened was that it still would show that Apple logo when you plug in the battery. Anyway, I had to go inside the phone and um, right now it is open but I think if you've never opened this, um, I think let me just let you know that remove the screw, that screw and then pry in between and as this is gaping slowly like that because the fibers are on the left hand side uh, then pull it a little backwards and then flip it to the left and you can see right now what we have here as this phone is working we actually have a new battery inside and uh, this was the old battery so before i get ahead of myself let me still continue with you slowly now what happened is after that happened, naturally my mind went to uh, usually after water damage at times the operating system crashes. So I was like, you know what, let me restore this with iTunes. However, on restoring with iTunes, it started writing and then at some point it gave me error 4013. So I was a bit confused. I was like, why is it doing this? So something tells me, okay, you know what? Let's first check if the battery actually works. It turns out when I would plug this battery, uh, I have this thing. This thing helps me with waking up dead batteries. So when you look at it, it uh, has demarcations on here. So this is the location for the iPhone 12 Pro and Mini. So I plug in the battery into that. And I, and I give this power from the charger, it will glow and show me uh, the voltage and then the charging current. Now this battery was behaving in a manner that it would not show me the charging current or voltage. And um, that already made me suspect the battery to have led to that error. However, when I called my closest peer to consult with them, he said, oh, no, that is nothing to do with the battery. It's something to do with the NAND chip. But I was really like, but I was like, mm. anyway, I was already certain that my battery was faulty because when I exposed it, uh, you could see signs of corrosion right here. And when I flip, and that is, this is how you're seeing here is the battery management board for the battery the one that regulates the charging current and which current it can release. Now when you look critically right there, you will see that um, there's that greenish uh, powder-like thing that normally happens when 
sort of electrolysis happens because the stimulator has power in it. So what I did, I was like, you know what? Since I wasn't certain that uh, the battery is faulty, but of course that powder suggested that it was faulty, I like, wait a minute, let me measure the voltage. So I set out with my voltmeter, uh, my multimeter in voltage mode, and then I came to the terminals of, uh, of the battery at the end where it goes into the phone. And when I put this here, it measured that we had voltage 1.4, 1.5. And that is very wrong because this would suggest the battery is totally depleted and needs jump starting. But again, it shouldn't go below 3. When it goes below 3, it's too bad because 0% usually corresponds with about 3.4. So below 3 is already bad. Now, this was horrible. Anyway, just to be sure, like, you know, since I am able to access the terminals of the accumulator, let me measure the terminals of the accumulator. On measuring, strangely, the accumulator has actually charged. It's at 3.9. This is almost... 80% if not 100%. That meant this control board was faulty. So as I was trying to restore this iPhone through iTunes, it was unfortunate that actually the battery was faulty. So it did not proceed well with the restoration. Anyway, having now confirmed that it is inevitable that I will need a battery if I am to proceed with any other repair because I actually didn't have a replacement battery or a test battery with me, I decided let me go and buy the battery all the same because after all the person who was suggesting that it's a nine chip failure also didn't have a battery so therefore they needed me to have a battery for them to help me fix that problem. Anyway, I went ahead and then bought this battery right here. But as though this phone was trying to pull stunts on me, what actually happened was when I started restoring, it reached uh, a point and gave me an error code, which was, I think, 93, which was a bit strange. I'd never seen that. And it was very frustrating. I was like, what if this guy was right after all in saying that the NAND chip was faulty and I was just being rebellious and hoping that I could get away without paying that money. Anyway, what happened is I proceeded to leave the phone connected to the PC that I was using to restore and that's when I saw the red icon that shows the battery is low. So it turns out actually the replacement battery that I bought, which was this, actually had no charge. I think the little charge it had was almost close to 0%. Uh, therefore, what I decided to do was then, again, get back this thing of ours, get that battery. Let me actually power off the phone. Get that battery. Uh, just so that I can show you how the two behave, the good battery and the bad battery. Let me first shut that down. Uh, I believe it has shut down. Now let me disconnect the battery. I haven't even secured it in because I felt I should first explain some of the things to you. Now this is the battery. So what I did is as usual looked for iPhone 12 or 12 mini right there and then plugged it in. Now observe what happens when I plug in the power source, the charger into this jump starter. You see, it shows me it is drawing 1.4 amperes of current. I wonder whether you guys are able to see the 1.4. Okay, the one is a bit faint, but uh, it's drain, drawing 1.4 amperes. And then this is uh, 4.1. So it became a bit obvious now to me that, okay, this is the difference between the two. I think the, seeing these LEDs on camera is hard. Okay. And therefore, I let it charge for about 30 minutes. And upon letting it charge for 30 minutes, I removed it and then came back, placed it in the phone, 
and then repeated the restore process and lo and behold the phone was able to restore to the point let me first plug this right in to the point where it started working like successfully and i was very happy i had uh, survived the money of buying a new motherboard or at least uh, dealing with the memory chip the nan chip and uh, here we are right now with a functioning iphone 12 mini so what are the lessons i've learned perhaps the phone had a dead battery and after taking it through the precautionary method of cleaning the board and i would have just bought a new battery without attempting to restore so in a way i feel like i caused this person to lose their information for not having had a functioning iphone 12 mini battery to test with uh two is that at times follow your guts and do things try out things before you proceed to consult outwards and we are here so this person has survived spending an extra amount on flashing the nan uh, or replacing the nan chip that's like the chip that has the storage information the information on where what is stored and um, aside from that i'm very delighted to have you guys here and i'm very happy that uh, i was able to go through this such that i can learn it so in summary is whenever you encounter that error code 401313 40 13 on an iphone 12 mini try that try changing the battery and then restore so i am thankful and uh, for that i think i am going to proceed to close this phone together uh, thank you for being here with me and i am delighted to have shared this moment with you guys so it's a beautiful day i'm grateful i wonder whether i was clear in my explanation if i wasn't very clear bear with me because there was a lot of things to talk about that was water damage restoring faulty battery non chip and then leap of faith uh, the battery activator board to sort of wake up the battery it's a beautiful day thank you and if you're new here and watch this long it's my humble request that you hit the subscribe button perhaps this was meant to be your day ciao See you in the next video.